What's up? I'm Travis. And I'm Tyler. <laughs> we are Twisted Transcription Studios. He's not going to talk anymore. Take it away. But today, we're talking about mic placement. Again, but just for guitar. <laughs> So what are you going to tell us about? <laughs> I'm going to tell you about different spots you can put a mic and or mics on a cab. If you've been following along with us in each of our How to Make Metal on a Budget, you should have all the equipment we're going to mention in this video. And if you don't, go get it! Yeah. <laughs> you might not have a guitar cab that's a 4x12, but... It's okay, because it works anyway with at least a 2x12. A 1x12, you're only really going to be able to use one mic, but I mean, you get what I mean. But at any rate, the first thing we're going to show you is on speaker one, just outside of the dust cone, and we're going to play a track for you right now. So this is your typical setup if you're only running one mic, right? It is. It is. It's what I use in all of our making metal on a budget intros and outros and stuff like that. All the music in the background of these videos we've been playing, all this has been recorded on, with making metal on a budget. Yeah, with that one mic scenario just outside the dust gun on speaker one. That's because I like speaker one. Each speaker's got a different sound. Um, but I like speaker one. And just outside the <clears> dust cone... <throat> Is going to give you a, a little bit brighter of a sound, not quite as bright as your dead center. I, I never do dead center just because I don't like it being that bright. But it's a little bit brighter than the other options. So, so what about speaker two? What's it sound like? Actually, we're going to show you right now what it sounds like. <laughs> So, how would you say these two compare or contrast? Like, what's the different um, sound? To me, Speaker 2 sounds a whole lot darker. It's a more... Grungy sound, maybe? Uh, maybe I would say that, yeah. It's, it's much darker, um, so it, it would almost work well if you had a two-mic scenario and you had one on each, Speaker 1, Speaker 2. Because then you got a, a, a good contrast you can blend in the mix. But Speaker 2 is a lot darker, so for a one-mic scenario, I personally wouldn't use just it. Um, What's your next setup you got over there? Moving on, we're going to off-axis placement. Um, and you can do this to get a darker sound off any preferred speaker as well. And we'll check uh, off-axis on speaker one out right now. So that was speaker one, just off axis, still kind of pointed at dust cone, um, a little bit dark, just as uh, not quite as dark as speaker two straight on was, um, but still a little bit darker than speaker one straight on, that off axis, and that's where you would come into like a dual mic technique, where you would have two SM57s, which is the mic that we're using in this situation, and one would be straight on and one would be off axis to blend that uh, bright and dark together without having to use a bunch of different stands and all yeah. sorts of shit like that but um to me is that i mean that's a good sound if you had 257s i would recommend doing that fredman technique style thing but i personally don't run an off axis by itself just because it's, it's a little bit too dark yeah 
Um, from there, we're going to move on to speaker number four off axis and show you how much it changes. So that one's a little uh, crispy, ain't it? Yeah, yeah that one's <laughs> speaker four is probably the brightest speaker on my cab. I don't know why, and it it it, it's, it it's really unreal. changes the sound. Like, yeah, yeah, and it's some crazy. You can you could probably blend that into something else and have it sound like like good. I don't know, but I definitely would not use speaker four by itself just because it's really thin sounding. It's just nah, it's, it's just not a good go for me. So it's like. I'm sure every cab's different, but like, is each speaker gonna sound this have the same sound on every cab? No. Or you gotta play around every with them cab. And find out which one's which. Exactly. You need to for you. Like I said, speaker one's great for me. Uh, speaker two might be great on your guitar cab. Speaker four might be great on somebody else's cab. It's all. I mean, it's 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 crazy how it works. But each speaker sounds just a little bit different. Cool. Um. From that point, we're going to move on, and we're going to, like I said, if you've been following along, you should have an SM57 and a condenser, a condenser mic, just like the one we're recording this with. Um, and what we did here is we took speaker one just outside of desk like we had in the first configuration, and then we added a condenser about a foot off the cab, kind of right in the middle of it to get a little bit of the bounce of sound. And we'll check it out right now as well. <laughs> So what did you think of that one, Doc? Uh, kind of got a uh, classic rock feel to it. It's like some Zeppelin or something. Yeah. It's just got an old staticky sound. Yeah, it's very midi, yeah. and you can really like feel the distortion in it with that condenser. Um, personally, I wouldn't recommend using a condenser on a cab, but we did it for this purpose just so you'd know what it sounded like. Um, like I said, that's a foot off a cab, and some people actually do use a condenser as a room mic, but you'd want to have it good and far off yeah, to get some of the verb. Room. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was speaker one and dead center about a foot off the cab and you got that really midi cause that's where that condenser is working the hardest as in that spoken voice area. So that's yeah. the mids. Um, <laughs> we're going to roll on next. I was about to, to say, what's your next setup? Yeah, there you go. We're going to roll next to speaker one still just off dust cone. And this one is going to put the condenser just on speaker two, like dead center. And we'll check it out now. <laughs> So, what's your thoughts on that one? Well, that one's extra <laughs> loud. <laughs> and, I mean, it's it's so full of mids. And with that condenser just so far up, you can't turn the audio interface down but so much. And it's still loud as still hell. Still got that old school Rocky classic yeah, rock still sound. Still got that old school sound. Um, and it might not sound extra loud to y'all because I'm going to try and turn it down in the mix so it doesn't blow your speakers out. But just know that. <laughs> After recording and listening to all of these tracks, that was the only one we had to. Oh turn gosh, down. yeah. I mean, it was just woo, very loud, but it is it is very midi as again with that condenser. Um, some people use ribbon mics on their uh, cabs. I guess we potentially do have an extra <laughs> ribbon mic right now. We yeah. could have done that, but I don't. Um, I've heard I've heard a lot about people using the Royer mics, which are kind of like a long tube, putting it up on the cab. There's a million different ways you can mic it. Um, these are just the couple of ways that we have. And like I said, I would if you're if you're on a budget, I would stick with a one mic scenario and just outside the dust cone. Yeah, I was about to say, what's your on a budget preferred setup? I use speaker one for me, just to get that 
It's bright, got a good beefy, but yeah, not bright, so but not dark, so yeah. muddy sound. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you don't want it to be fried, crispy like no speaker four. Yeah, and you, but, but you don't want a garage band out of Seattle sound number either. Number two, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's just uh, that speaker one's got that good in between. Like I said, if I had two mics, I might would use speaker four, probably not still, but I might would use speaker one a little closer to the dust cone, and then off axis on speaker two or something. Just a good blend. Yeah, give it a good mix. Right, so if you did spring for an extra SM57, do something like that. I mean, there's a million different methods to try, and it's at your Just fingertips. Find out what you like and what sounds good, what sound you're looking for, I should say. Right, because everybody's looking for something different. I mean, yeah, it the, took you a while to figure out your sound. Right, with Remember. the with the with the style that we play, I mean, it's it's um, it's it's really just it takes well, time. And that's you what works for me. Yeah, you just gotta keep messing with it. Like, some of y'all out there right, might really hate the way my setup sounds. And, I mean, I really hate the way some other people's sounds are. But, I mean... <laughs> no names mentioned. Yeah, you got to, you've got to find your own style. And that includes micing for recording. And I know a lot of people out there might think, well, I'm going to the studio. So, the guy doing the studio should know how to do it. Well, he probably does. But he doesn't know how you do it. Yeah. And... Plus, you that would... Like, you knowing your sound and having your sound will make it easier on the yeah. mix and, and, audio engineer. And, and even if even if he does decide he wants to change it, you know, like, because yeah. he, he is the man in charge at the studio. So you kind of need to, you need you need to listen to him because we're running a studio and I would hate it if somebody came, well, this is what I do all the time. Well, it doesn't really matter because you're paying us. Yeah. But anyway, um, listen to what he has to say, but definitely let him know if, if you have a preferred sound. That this is what I normally do. And maybe he can listen to that and mold something different yeah. for you. I mean, they can always go in and change it. Ain't no big deal. But yeah, right. like, if and you're just going to be a pain in the ass about it, like not know what you want yeah. or just trying to control everything. There's, there's one of like two that. ways. You either have to be very, uh, you have to, what is it? What's the word I'm looking for? I have no clue. You lost me. And that's the thing with going to the studio. You have to compromise. If you know what you're talking about, you have to compromise with your mix engineer or your the person that's recording you. I wouldn't even say you have to compromise. You just have to be willing to compromise. Like yeah. you can't just go in there being like, "This is how I'm gonna have it. This is how I want it done." Like, right? I mean, you you know you want your sound, but then again, you got to be willing to compromise. Yeah. Like, and that's the two ways I think you need to go in. As you either need to go in only knowing your tracks, your songs, and not knowing anything about the recording yeah, process. We didn't. Or, we started or yeah. a couple times we got recorded. Or you need to know just enough to know how to get your sound and be willing to work with the person that's recording you. Yeah. Because if, if you don't know what you're doing in the studio, then that leaves it all up to him, and that's probably good. It's going to turn out sounding like he wants you to sound. But if you do know what you want to sound like, you have some more input when you come into the studio. Like I said, you might not get everything you want because what you want probably sucks ass. <laughs> but... Um, that's that's what that's how it is. The the guy um, running the studio knows what's best for the sound. Just yeah, like if he's got some today. experience, like he's probably got your sound or something close to what you want, and it won't take Already nothing recorded. to uh, yeah. adjust. And that's that's just like we saw today. Like if if you come in and try and talk about uh, well, this is what I like to sound like. Da 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 da. da but you didn't know that each speaker on this mic sounds completely yeah, I different. Didn't. I don't know anything about it. This was all new for me. Yeah. He was in there moving stuff around. I'm recording him, and I was just like, that does sound different. Yeah, each speaker sounds different. If you didn't know that, and you're in here trying to tell a mix engineer or the guy recording you what you want to do. <laughs> I want it beefier. Yeah. Like, that, that don't say nothing. Exactly. At any rate, we, I digress. We kind of got on a tangent there yeah. about mixing and stuff. But as you can see, each speaker sounds different. So try everything out. and Go see experiment what you on your own cab and... Yeah, and when Play you get around with it, when you get done with that, uh, just make sure you like and subscribe and hit the bell. Go find us on Facebook and Instagram at Twisted Transcription. Yep, and uh, I guess we'll see you next time.